ENTJs, what? Bosses. I'm trying to make myself be efficient. <laughs> Every time I do a video about one of the types, I'm like, okay, what would this type want? Okay, I'm gonna try to do it in a way that they would like it. And I don't really succeed. <laughs> I start off maybe for the first little bit doing it, but you know, eventually you just come back to who you are and that's what you gotta do, which I guess is good. ENTJs are bosses. Okay, so I'm an INTJ and I try so hard to be like ENTJs. When I very first heard about Myers-Briggs and cognitive functions through personality hackers who I've first heard about it from. And their whole advice is like to develop your co-pilot, which is extroverted thinking, which I think is fantastic advice. Um, I was like maybe 18, 18 ish, somewhere, anyway, somewhere in that ballpark when I first heard about cognitive functions and stuff. I really took that advice to heart to develop extroverted thinking. And my method of doing that was to get around ENTJs and to try to be more like them and be better about it. You guys freaking are great. You guys can just like accomplish anything you want. You're just bold. You have a boldness. Like I think what INTJs need to learn from ENTJs is the freaking boldness. Like you just like go out there and do it. I know an ENTJ and she has like so many projects going. She's like head of them all. I mean, you guys just like get shit done. Anyways, I really admire ENTJs. And I know that sometimes dominant like TE users, if you don't know what that is, I'll explain it in a second, but I know that dominant like ETJs sometimes get a bad rap for being like too pushy or whatever, but I'm like, you go, do your thing. We freaking need it. Somebody's got to do it. An ENTJ might not know this because you're never in a group when you're not there obviously, but when I'm in a group and an ENTJ is there, like a friend group, or if an ENTJ is not there, like it's so much more chaotic when there's no dominant TE user. Like just things are not done efficiently. <laughs> People take like the wrong route to get somewhere. They're like, oh, we went here and oh no, it's closed. And I don't know, just kind of like these annoying halts in the day just like don't happen with e when ENTJs are there. And so I really enjoy it. If something like that ever happens, I'm like, oh, why didn't I get into TE a little bit more? Should I just take in charge of the thing instead of being a background character? That's something that I <laughs> have to work on. Anyways, so yeah. So if you just took like the 16 personalities test, you know, like E versus I, N versus S, it goes a whole level deeper and it actually originated like a long time ago and it, way deeper. Um, so in the early 1900s, Carl Jung coined what are called cognitive functions. And these are basically eight ways that your cognition functions, eight ways that your brain functions, the way that you perceive information, the way you judge information, the way you make decisions. And since then, Dario Nardi has hooked different personalities up to the EEG machine and done brain scans. And he's found that it really does correlate. The different personalities use um, regions of the brain more often than other personalities will use that same region of the brain. So then later on what Myers and Briggs is, they kind of named these types. So they said, okay, if you use this region and this region, like this function and this function, we'll call you the ENTJ. If you use this function and this function, we'll call you the ISFP. Um, so the way you figure that out, those names that they gave, like ISFJ, those are kind of a code. Um, so the way you figure out the regions, like the functions that you use, you take the two metal letters, those are kind of the meat of it. I um, mean, everyone's second letter is considered their perceiving letter. It's what information you're interested in perceiving. Like in a room, what are you interested in? What do you take in? Like, how do you learn? Um, and for ENTJs, it's like, it's the patterns and the trends and um, how this impacts the future. Um, kind of taking in intuitions like that. Um, and everyone's third letter is their judging letter, not judging like in a bad way, but it's how you make judgments, how you make decisions. It's kind of the criteria you use to say this decision is better than this decision. And for ENTJs, they're like the more efficient thing, the thing that works, the things that'll get shit done. Like that is the best thing to do. And that's how we make a good decision. So you might notice like the words judging, perceiving, that corresponds to your last letter. So if you're a J, a judger, it means you extrovert your judging function, which for you is thinking. So you're oriented on the external, the extroverted thinking. Like what works out here? How can we get shit done out here? Uh, lead people, uh, getting things off the to-do list. And then since you extrovert your judging function, you just automatically introvert your perceiving function. So you're oriented on your um, inner intuitions, your inner patterns of your future. You kind of like go in your mind and you think about how things are going to pan out. And it's like the one thing. And then since you're an extrovert, that letter out front, it means that you dominantly prioritize your extroverted function and you secondarily prioritize your introverted function. So that means that your first cognitive function is extroverted thinking, abbreviated TE, and your second cognitive function is introverted intuition, abbreviated NI. But out of the eight cognitive functions that Carl Jung coined, every person dominantly uses four of those in kind of specific ways. Some are more of a strength, some are more of a weakness. The way you figure out your third function is it's the direct opposite of your second function. So since your second function is introverted intuition, the opposite of introverted is extroverted, the opposite of intuition is sensing. So extroverted sensing is your third function. And your second and third function, 
They're direct opposites. They're like a yin yang. They're like a polarity. Together they come together and they complement each other and create kind of a complete picture. Your fourth function is the direct opposite of your first function. Since your first function is extroverted thinking, the opposite of extrovert is introverted. The opposite of thinking is feeling. So introverted feeling is your fourth function. And it's the direct opposite of your first function. Once again, like a yin yang polarity, they come together and complement each other and they're the exact opposites. So if you can get a grasp on the definition of one side of the polarity, you can just think of like, what's the opposite of that? And that's kind of the definition of the polarity on the other side. So I'm gonna get into kind of the definitions of these functions. And as I go through, if this does not seem like you, it doesn't seem like it's resonating, you could be mistyped. I know a lot of the times online tests are one letter off. Sometimes they're correct. Sometimes they're two letters off, but most of the time they're one letter off. So you might wanna look into the INTJ, the ESTJ, the ENFJ, and the ENTP. Um, and just see, because like, especially if the last letter P is off, it creates a whole different result. That letter is kind of crucial to get right. I do offer like typing services, like a type verification. Um, so if you want to like message me on Instagram, Alexis M. Kingsley, I do type verification. I do coaching. Um, what I'm really interested in is how people can grow with type. And I think ENTJs would be interested in that as well. Like I'm not so much interested in definitions as much as I'm interested in like, how you can grow from it and be a better person. And so if you're interested in that and like tailoring it to your experience, I would love to do any sort of coaching. Um, I also do have a Myers-Briggs playlist that goes from easiest to most complex. It goes kind of chronologically in the order that I feel like is best for people to watch them. So you can kind of check that out if you want um, more information or kind of like, how did I get to this point? Cause I'm kind of like skimming over the top and directing this toward the ENTJ, but I do have more deep dives in that playlist. So your first cognitive function is extroverted thinking and everyone's first cognitive function is like, who they feel like they are. You're using it like 98% of the time. You know, even if like in childhood, your parents didn't really support this function, people will find a way, they find a path for they're gonna use their first function. Even, even if society like doesn't really want them to, people find a way. And it's the function that you use in the most contexts of your life. So you tend to use extroverted thinking at home, at work, with your friends, at church, you know, in all areas of your life, you tend to use your first function. And um, that's how you can kind of tell that it's well developed and well integrated is you use it in more and more contexts of your life. Um, so what the words mean extroverted thinking is it means you're paying attention to the thinking, kind of like the logical criteria in the extroverted world, meaning the external world. Extrovert means to turn outward. Introvert means to turn inward. We use those words kind of differently than like the everyday public uses the words introvert and extrovert. So it's basically like turning out. Um, and extroverted thinking, as well as extroverted feeling, really want to impact the external environment. You kind of want to impact the logical criteria. So that means that extroverted thinking really likes to, they like to control things also. It likes to, it likes to lead, it likes to get things done, it likes to be productive. Like all the ETJs I know get so much stuff done. Even if extroverted thinking itself isn't like a body moving <laughs> function doing things, it has a desire to be effective. And to be effective, you gotta get stuff done. So this region of the brain is going to lead you th to then take actions. It's kind of like a cause effect. And it really wants to be productive, it wants to be efficient, it wants to set goals, achieve goals, very oriented um, around money. It might say things like, by the end of quarter two, I wanna up our revenue 15%. Um, you know, it's very numbers oriented, especially in, like in the external world. How can we impact things in the external world? Um, and it's not particularly people-y. Like um, when, I think like when the everyday public thinks of extrovert, they would think like, party animal, sociable. But ENTJs aren't necessarily party animals. They do have an extroverted sensing function which could make them a party animal, potentially. But extroverted thinking on its own is just, it's mostly impacting things in the external world. Uh, getting things done, tasks done, setting up a Google Calendar, um, efficient, not double booking. Really into, I've noticed a lot of uh, TE users are into like nonfiction books, like business books, personal development books. It's like, what's the usable information? Like, I don't wanna just read some like fiction book about this couple and this love story or whatever. That's just kind of useless to me. I can't use that really in my everyday life. What's more usable is like, how to grow your business and how to be a better leader. And so I noticed that TJs will tend to read books like that more so. ENTJ's second function is introverted intuition. Um, and everyone's second function tends to be kind of an underused strength, um, especially when you're younger, like in your teens and 20s. And the reason is because you're an extrovert and so going to introversion is not as comfortable. You know, people get a lot of like enjoyment and kind of like pleasure seeking from their extroverted functions if they're an extrovert. And so to go to an introverted function, that's not gonna be like as pleasurable per se. It's not gonna be as comfortable to like out of your comfort zone. To like turn inward, like that kind of introversion. Like I could see an ENTJ working by themselves and getting a lot of stuff done, impacting the external environment. But to go inside and do nothing with the external environment, only working inside yourself, 
that is a little bit less comfortable to go to. And I feel like it's so important for people to go to that because introversion and extroversion are both needs. You have a preference for one and you need both. And the analogy I use is like food and water. You might have a preference for food over water, but at the end of the day, you need both despite your preferences. And the reason is because food and water give you different things and you like need them to survive. And the same way introversion and extroversion are, it's kind of like, a bell curve. You've got a small amount of people that are like 100% introverted. You've got a small percentage of people that are 100% extroverted. And those are the least healthy people. Um, the people that are like more healthy are the ones that are more integrated and more balanced. And that's kind of evidenced by when I look at older people, like people in their 60s, 70s, they seem a little bit more balanced. They've gotten a little more well-rounded, a little bit more seasoned, a little bit more mature as they've gotten older. And when I look at people that are very extreme, I look at like junior hires. Um, I taught junior high for a while and they're very extreme. I've got some very introverted students, some very extroverted students. And that's, you know, that's kind of just like stereotypically the worst time of life. So the things that introversion and extroversion give you are this. Introversion gives you a depth and a clarity and a wisdom and a clear vision. It distills down. This is what I want. It gets deeper and deeper until you know this is exactly the thing. Extroverted functions kind of expand and explore and give impact. And when you have both, that's perfect. You have input and output and input and output. If you have too much of either one of those things, you feel very depleted. If you have way too much introversion, very depleted. You're no longer getting that diverse information from people. Um, you're no lo longer having wisdom based in reality because you're never participating in reality. So you might get these very like convoluted complex theories, but it's like not really based in anything. For extroverts, they get really scattered and shallow and they're running ragged and they're way too busy. And so that theoretical impact that extroversion gives you is lost because you don't have any depth. Like only if you have deep engaging with the world do you really have impact but introverts can tend to just start you know binging netflix and that's not a deep kind of introversion that's going to give you wisdom extroverts tend to just be busy all the time and that's not you know the valuable impactful time that really impacts people's lives you know it's fun but it's not necessarily impactful so for entjs to get a little bit more introverted the main function they can pull on is introverted intuition and so into introverted intuition is one of those perceiving functions it's how you take in information and it's kind of taking in intuitions, which are patterns, trends, things that are not there, and it's processing them inwardly. So it's kind of looking at where do I think college attendance is trending? Is college on the uphill or is it on the downhill? And you're going inside and kind of thinking about the trend. And it's not thinking about the possibilities like college could be doing this, it could be doing this, it could be doing this, it could be doing this, but it's zoning in on what is it doing? Like what is the one thing that it's doing? And it's zoning in on your own future, how you want your own future to look like, how you think other things are trending, um, how you think the stock market is trending or real estate market, like how things are trending. It's a long timeline. It's a slow moving function. It's not in its body. It's not very energetic. It's just kind of like, <laughs> like introvert intuition. I can think about. It's like, it's like sitting alone in a dark room, thinking about how you think things are trending and you're just like going inside. And it's thinking about like 50 years from now, it's very long timeline, it's very slow, not moving its body. And it slows you down. I think ENTJs like to move fast, but this function kind of slows you down because you need kind of a balance also with speed. Like you don't want to be a sloth, but you don't want to be a cheetah your whole life, like on a hamster wheel, you know? So you it, introversion, extroversion kind of regulate your speed as well. So introverted intuition feels like it doesn't have that much energy to burn. So it's very particular about the activities that it engages in. It says, this is what I want my future to look like. And so I'm going to go toward that path, this true north, like all the time with every action I take. Um, I think sometimes ENTJs can be a little scattered, like engaged in 12 projects at once. And then maybe by the time you complete all 12 projects, you're like, okay, well, I got some um, resources, like I got new contacts, but in the long run, are those contacts valuable? Like in 70 years, will I look back and be like, oh, that was a good contact to have? Or was I just trying to impress that person? And so it's really important to get clear on, you know, what do you want out of the next 60 years of your life? And just make sure that every action you take is going toward that long-term vision. Because ENTJs, I mean, they're known as like the commanders and they can be very visionary. Take in a group of people on this one path that's really impactful. Um, and seeing kind of, you know, carving forward that one little path. It's like the stream finding that one little rut and, fo and following it. And I think this function like slows you down. It gives you kind of a sense of um, sitting with people. I think sometimes with the NTJs, I've said this before, but it feels like they've got 400 stops, 400 things to do today, and you're just stopped 267. So be quick and get out of their way. And that's only with like unhealthy ENTJs. When ENTJs are healthy, you know, they feel very present and it feels like they're with you. And it feels like they haven't overbooked themselves. They've done the few important things and are very intentional with their time. And so they can afford to move slower. You know, they're 
able to move 100 miles an hour metaphorically but you don't they don't need to you know you can just cut down on the quantity of things so that you can up the quality of the things that you do and i think also you know entjs can sometimes all the etjs well all the tjs i guess can be workaholics and i think introverted intuition says you know what, in 80 years, is this going to have been an important thing? And you know, some of the work you do is, and some of the work that you do isn't going to be important. And it really looks to the future and says like, is my future self going to thank me for this? And if not, I'm not gonna do it because sometimes the most effective thing is to have fun. You only get one life and you know, you wanna make a name for yourself, you wanna have impact, but I don't know that you wanna spend your whole life working on unimportant things. So your third function is extroverted sensing. I um, mean, everyone tends to over rely on their third function, especially when they're younger, like junior high, high school, 20s, people tend to be over reliant on this third function. Um, and it's taking in the sensory experiences, like the five senses, the thing is around you, and it's external. So you're paying attention to the external experiences. Um, so it's really liking loud noises and sounds and expending energy and moving your body and moving quickly. Um, it's the exact opposite of introverted intuition. It's that yin yang, like I said. So if introverted intuition likes to be slow and be only in its mind, extrovert sensing likes to move quickly and be in its body. Introverted intuition is in the future and casting a vision for 70 years from now and how are things going to trend. Extroverted sensing is just like, what's happening right now? And how can I have fun right now and be playful right now and be fully immersed in the moment? Introverted intuition is a lot more serious. It's not so um, playful and fun. So I think for people that use extroverted sensing dominantly, like ESPs, um, it can make them very present, very fun, and fully immersed in the moment. I think for ENTJs, sometimes all it does is amp up their speed. So extroverted thinking wants to be efficient. Extroverted sensing has the energy to burn. It'll move really quickly. And so you get a lot of things done in a short amount of time. Um, now the question is, just because you can do something efficiently, I don't know if that means that you should do something efficiently. Um, because it could be the wrong action to take. Maybe you shouldn't have taken the action in the first place. Um, it could bulldoze people. Like maybe it's better to take the inefficient route for the sake of keeping relationships long term. I mean, you really have to think about what works long term versus what works now. And you have to try your hardest to choose always what works in the long run. Delayed gratification is kind of something that I think of with introverted intuition. You're kind of, extroverted sensing can just be a lot about indulgence. We're just gonna eat all this decadent food and I'm gonna watch The Bachelor. Or just kind of do all these pleasure seeking activities that my future self may not necessarily thank me for if I'm using it in an unhealthy way. You know, people get too extroverted, like in their first and third functions. Um, it can make them very quick to speak. So if you're too extroverted, you're too quick to speak, you don't listen very much. If you're too introverted, you listen all the time, never share anything about yourself. <clears throat> so there are issues both ways. And I think sometimes it can make um, entities just jump in. Like if they have a subordinate, uh, sometimes they're like, have you done this? You need to do this. And the person already did it, they had it handled. And if they're just a little quicker to listen without jumping in, they would know, oh yeah, they did do it. You could just observe rather than having to like jump in and say something. In a good way, I think this makes ENTJs very attractive. I really like their sense of style personally. Same with ENFJs. I love the way extroverted sensors dress when they have it in this position. Um, I think it could lead to some indulgences, like maybe spending too much money on indulgences. That could be clothing, that could be food, you know, whatever your personal <laughs> brand of indulgences are. And I think overall this dichotomy just illustrates quality and quantity. I think for the ENTJ, it's good to go for the fewer quality um, than it is for the bigger quantity. And I think that's kind of the fight that ENTJs have to fight. Are you gonna be on the hamster wheel uh, at the whip of you need to be productive, you need to be productive, you need to get stuff done, get it done right now. Um, or are you gonna like slow down and just choose wisely the things that you wanna do? Um, I think of the second and third function, like especially people who are younger, they're using them like a lot. And I feel it's like a light switch flipping up and down since they're a polarity and yang. And it's like the, Introvert intuition is like when the light switch is flipped up and it's like the angel on your shoulder. And then when the light switch flips down, that's like the devil on your shoulder, down to extroverted sensing. And that's just when you're younger. I mean, I found when people are older, they do a better job at integrating all their functions than younger people. But like if you're younger, you may just wanna like stay away from extroverted sensing a little bit. So ENTJ's fourth function is introverted feeling. Um, and it's the exact opposite of extroverted thinking. It's like another light switch polarity. So it's all about the inner feelings and convictions. So extroverted thinking is like, how can we be productive and get stuff done? Introverted feeling is like, I just only wanna do what I want to do. Extroverted thinking is like, how can we get stuff done quickly? Introverted feeling is moving a lot slower and thinking about what it wants to do. Extroverted thinking will do something done because it looks good on a resume. Introverted feeling is like, I only wanna do it if I truly want to do it, it makes sense to my convictions. Um, extroverted thinking sees kind of a means to an end. It's like, I don't wanna do this 
right now, but that'll get me to somewhere I do want to go. Um, sometimes exploiting kind of a utilitarian perspective, introverted feeling is like every action is kind of its own isolated thing. We need to be moral at every step of the way. There's not a means to an end. We don't want to do things we don't like to get things we do like. We're just only going to do things that we like. For people, especially when they're younger, they tend to be in their first function like 98% of the time, which means they're only in their fourth function flip down like 2% of the time. I think it's important for people to bump that up. Not a lot, but maybe go from 2% of the time to 10% of the time to start to integrate it. If you're older, you could do it even more so than that. But I see it as kind of like a seesaw. You've got your extroverted functions on one side and your introverted functions on the other side. And you're trying to get to a point where you're as balanced as possible. Um, so since your first function is extroverted thinking, let's say that's on this side of the t-shirt, that's a heavy hitter, extroverted thinking. That is a massively heavy function because your dominant function. Um, and then you also have, on this side have extroverted sensing. And if you're younger and kind of unhealthy, that's gonna weigh that down a lot. So you wanna get a little bit more balanced with introversion. Um, so you put introvert intuition on this side. And it like can almost move the scale, but it's like if you can just get a little bit more in introverted feeling, it tips it even more. So I think introverted feeling is helpful for just kind of balancing the scale a little bit more with introversion. You don't need to be like 100% an ambivert, but you know, getting more and more balanced. So what I've heard before, like different personalities kind of have their own issues. And what I've heard before is like introverted feelers, so IFPs, they know exactly what they want but they don't know how the, the steps to take to get it with the extroverted thinking. It's like the starving artist. They know exactly that they wanna be um, like a musician, but they cannot take the productive <laughs> steps to get there. And then ETJs are like the opposite. They could accomplish anything they want. With extroverted thinking, they are so productive. They know exactly what steps they would have to take and they could get there, but they don't know what they want. They don't have the introverted feeling. I think sometimes with the ENTJs, they don't take enough time to slow down for themselves. The idea of like a self-care day, I can't imagine that they're even doing that sort of thing. I can imagine that they're in businesses that they originally got into just because they wanted to be successful. And then after 20 years, they think about it and they're like, why did I want to be successful again? What, you know, what was the point of me doing this? Because extrovert thinking can be very success chasing and uh, making a name for yourself. When you get there, introverted feelings, like, I don't know that we wanted this. And then if you don't develop introverted feeling until you're in your 40s, by that point, you've already you know, covered a lot of ground career-wise and already wasted a lot of time. Um, so it's important to use your two introverted functions to think with introverted intuition. What do I want my future to look like? With introverted feeling, what are my values? What do I want? What is the top important thing? And then you can use your extrovert functions to get there. But I think sometimes this function, um, a lot of times is turned off and people, their fourth function's turned off. And so it means that you're just kind of unaware of your feelings. Maybe unaware of your own feelings, unaware of other people's feelings, kind of the external feelings. And that can create some issues. You know, time can go on, things can build up and you can realize that you've been doing things that you don't like. And you, because you're unaware of your feelings, you might not realize it for a long time. So I've got some ENTJs when they're older, they got into yoga, they got into meditating, they got into praying. And I think the younger you are, like the sooner you can implement that, I think, I think that's good for anyone, honestly, is just kind of this prayer routine, this journaling routine, but any sort of activity where you turn inward, because introvert means to turn inward. And so if you can turn inward toward the future you want and think about that, turn inward and think about like your feelings and your convictions and your beliefs and what you're passionate about and what you like to do, that time is well spent. And if you can try to balance it out, I, you know, I don't think anyone's ever gonna be 50-50, but if you can just try to keep pushing more toward being in that turning inward, that reflective, slowed down place by yourself, um, you know, closer and closer to 50% of the time. I think that's incredibly healthy. As people get older, I notice they just tend to naturally do that. But if you can implement that when you're younger, I mean, that's ahead of the game. I think it'd be a great thing for you to do. There are, you know, general things are helpful. I mean, like reading a book, I mean, that's helpful because it'll slow you down. That's not necessarily turning inward. That's still kind of your mind oriented toward a book that's still not even asking yourself what you think. So that one's kind of like a mixture between introversion and extroversion, I would say. It's like, it's like not around people. It's probably one of the, it's probably technically an extroverted activity, but it's like one of the least extrovert activities you could do <laughs> reading a book, depending on what it is. But you just gotta like turn inward to yourself and reflect on, on what you think and what you want out of life. So I think for ENTJs, the big thing is for them to just learn how to sit still and ask themselves what they want and what they want their future to be like. Um, I absolutely love INTJs. I admire them so much. I think a good growth relationship is for INTJs and ENTJs to hang out because they can kind of rub off on each other, like especially in a work setting. But one thing I've heard, like if you're familiar with StrengthsFinder, for example, for example, their whole thing is you hone your strengths. Don't work on your weaknesses, only hone your strengths. And that's the best. And the thing about that is that is designed for a work setting. And so in a work setting, I do agree with that. Like at work, you hone your strengths, T, E, N, I. You don't even need to worry about your back two functions, which are kind of weaknesses, just do your top two functions. And the reason is because 
you're in an employee setting. So you have other people that are managing your weaknesses. So if you're weak in one area, another employee can pick up the slack and that's their strength. So in a work setting, it's fine. The only difference is like when you come home, like say you're married, there's only two of you, your weaknesses are not gonna be managed by another person. So if you communicate poorly to your spouse, there's not another employee like managing your bad communication. It's like, it's, it's just you two. <laughs> so I think in relationships, it's especially important to manage your weaknesses, your back two functions. That's just something like to note and work on. I think weaknesses really trip people up in relationships and then your strengths are really good at work. Introversion just gives you a sense of depth where you don't have to perform and run on a hamster wheel. I think sometimes ETJs can feel like, let me dance for you, I'll dance for you. Uh, you know, different personal types of different things. Like the EFJs are like, look, I'll be anyone who you want me to be, I'll dance for you. And ETJs are like, I'll be productive for you, I'll do anything you want, look at what a high performer I am. And it gives you a sense of just like slowing down and doing things for yourself. And you know, you don't have to perform for people to love you. You don't have to feel like you have to do 80 things a day uh, to be valued. Um, you found the value within yourself and you don't have to chase value externally. I really appreciate ENTJs for the work ethic and how they charge society forward and how they take charge and they take leadership roles. I also love how ENTJs develop people. They can find the hidden talents and the hidden strengths in people and really call that out and develop the employees that are under them. So I really admire ENTJ's ability to do that. Yeah, so if you're interested in type verification, um, you can just reach out to me on Instagram. My account is Alexis M. Kingsley. Um, I've been loving the Instagram conversations I've been having. So even if you don't want a coaching session, if you just want to reach out and chat, I've really been enjoying those. Um, yeah, so if you want a deeper dive, I have a Myers-Briggs playlist, which I will pop on the screen right now. I do also have like an ENTJ versus INTJ video if you're interested in that. Um, thanks so much for watching.